Did you know that Africa can have the best leadership in the world? Yes, Africa can have the best leadership in the world. And it's not rocket science, it's not as difficult as building an atomic bomb or a nuclear warhead. So on Africa can have the best leadership in the world. It depends on if we know how we can go about it. And there is a way we can have the best leadership in the world. Because Africa is in their need of the best leadership the world can offer. Then check in, in terms of world uh, per capita income. According to the International Monetary Fund IMF, in the year 2019, the average per capita income in the world is about $11,400 by GDP per capita income, nominal GDP. But in inner Africa, which derogatively is known as Sub-Saharan Africa, the per capita income is was about $1,500. And that of Europe is about $5,000. You can see the disparity between Europe and Africa and African world. And in terms of the poorest states in the world, if you check about the 10th, the 10 or 20th poorest states in the world, you find that African states dominate the least. And many African states have per capita income less than $1,500. And over 400 million Africans are living below the poverty line. That is, living on less than $1.90 a day. And over 600 million Africans are without electricity. The list keeps going on and on. And we know that it rests on the shoulders of the leaders of Africa to pull Africa from this dungeon of poverty into the high hills of prosperity. But we know that we have not been lucky in having good leaders in Africa. Right from the times of slave trade, when African leaders began to sell fellow Africans as slaves, although African leaders never chose to sell Africans as slaves, it was the Europeans who used force to mandate African leaders to begin to sell Africans as slaves. For example, what happened between the kings of Portugal and king of Congo, king Joao of Portugal and king Afonso of Congo, when king Afonso forced king Joao of Portugal forced king Afonso of Congo to begin to sell his people as slaves. And from there, it entered into colonization. And other colonization, European leaders who were the colonizers of Africa began to force Africans to maltreat their fellow Africans. They began to force us to collect colonial taxes, hot taxes from our people. And when they left, they created a system of dysfunctional leadership in Africa. And African leaders inherited that system until today. The hangover is still affecting Africa very drastically. And it now looks as though Africa cannot have the best leadership or cannot even have good leadership. And we have had a series of bad leadership all across the African continent and we have seen the effects. We have seen how poverty in Africa has been increasing, whereas poverty in other parts of the world is decreasing. And look at, for example, Nigeria. Nigeria has a population of about 209.5 million people as of March 2021, according to World Computer Info. And China has a population of about 1.44 billion, India about 1.37 billion. But Nigeria has more people living in extreme poverty than China and than India. This is a case of bad leadership. And Nigeria has been the sixth world largest producing oil country in the world for several years now. And Nigeria, according to the BBC, in the first 40 years of Nigeria's after Nigeria's independence, over 400 billion dollars were lost to corruption. This is money that was supposed to use to build the country. So the bad leadership in Africa is just all across Africa. And the problem needs to be solved. And we have not been having good leaders in Africa. And when we even uh, we are lucky to have some good leaders, they don't last in power. Like for example, Pombo Makufuli just died yesterday and he still rest in peace. We have been having bad leadership. We have bad leaders and bad leadership. And we have not been lucky to have good leadership. When we have good leaders, we see some level of progress, like what we saw in Libya and what we saw in Burkina Faso. And after that, we then have a series of bad leaders. Are we going to keep depending on luck? When we have good leaders, we succeed. When we don't have good leaders, we remain backward or become stagnant. The answer is left for us to decide. But indeed, Africa can have the best leadership in the world. And it's going to take three main ingredients to have the best leadership in the world. And the three ingredients that Africa needs to have the best leadership in the world are number one, the wheel, number two, dual parliament system, and number three, standard. Uh, number one, the wheel. There's a saying that where there is the wheel, there is the wheel. The wheel talks about being willing to pay the price to achieve what you want to achieve. 
Are Africans desirous of having the best leadership in the world? Are African leaders desirous of being the best leaders in the world? African leaders, as we know it, have not been, as we know them, have not been or playing the part very well. Now, let's talk about the people. Are the people of Africa willing to pay every price to make sure that we have good leaders? Will they be able to sustain protests? Will the African people be able to petition their leaders to accept the proposal that I'm going to present that is going to make Africa to have the best leadership in the world? If the answer is yes, then that is a very big plus because that is the first key. We must first of all be willing to have the best leadership the world can offer. That is the first because well, whatever knowledge, whatever knowledge there is, if the people are not willing to make it work, it's not going to work. Knowledge is power, potentially, but it becomes power actually when we work on it. Number two, dual parliament system. Our parliament is an organization that brings the leadership and the people of a nation or a territory together. And in most countries of the world, we have um, upper chamber and lower chamber parliaments, where we have the Senate, upper house, House of Representatives and lower house, as we have in Nigeria. In US, is the Congress as the lower house, and the higher house is the Senate. And we have such systems all across the world. And I call it a duplicate system of parliament system, or parliamentary system, because what they discuss, the same thing that they discuss in upper house, they deliberate also in the lower houses. So the same thing, they keep rolling, still keep discussing the same things over and over again, whereas the executive will keep having the upper hand. But the system we're going to have is the dual system. The dual system is that we're going to have two houses, at least in Africa. I'm not going to talk about the third house, the ethnic house for now, but let me focus on the two houses. Number one is the political house, and number two is the economic house. The political parliament will be the political house that will discuss issues that pertain to politics, social affairs in Africa. Then the second is the economic parliament that will discuss issues that pertain to economics and development in the African continent. And that system will be replicated across all tiers of African government. Then number three is the standard. And the standard I'm talking about is that there's going to be a standard in Africa. A standard that no leader should go below. Now, that standard I'm talking about is called leadership by objective. Leadership by objective. Our leadership by objective is a derivative of management by objective. And management by objective is a principle that Peter Drucker, who is known to be the father of modern day management, and who was the author of several books, about 30 books, he authored like the practice of management, the effective manager and so on. In his book, The Practice of Management, he wrote about a principle known as management by objective. And management by objective is a principle that sets a standard or sets an objective which everybody in the organization knows that he has specific objectives to achieve at a given specific period of time. And there are three or processes involved in this management by objective. Number one is objective setting, where the objectives, the organization sets an objective. Then number two is the process of achieving the objective. And number three is feedback mechanism, where the feedbacks are given to those in authority. Now, let me transfer this thread into what we are discussing in leadership by objective, leadership by objective. And this leadership by objective is simply uh, like, replicating management by objective into the African leadership system. Now, how, how does it work? Now, that's where the economic parliament comes into place. The economic parliament is going to be working together with the other arms of government. And what's going to happen? Number one, the economic team or economic uh, parliament, first of all, is going to be made up of economists, statisticians, mathematicians, those who are well read and those who are very serious, who are who have the acumen for management and economics, coming together, being elected in the economic parliament to deliberate on issues that have to do with economics and development in Africa. That's the first, the constitution of the economic parliament. Then, number two, the economic parliament will set out objectives in the different constituencies whether on the continental level for African leadership or at these different state levels 
that we are different states we have in Africa or different provinces. Now, the economic parliament will first of all check around and find out the tasks that need to be done in the states, the tasks that need to be carried out. Which road should be built? Well, what are the roads that have not yet been built? What are the projects that need to be carried out in this particular state? Then they will put up a document that contains all the projects that need to be carried out in the state that can build the states, whether in terms of building uh, farmland, building farms, building factories, building all those things, building airports, then compile all them in a list. In not just a list, but in a document. Now, any person who wants to become the governor of that particular state or prime minister of Africa or any of the offices that pertain to that particular province or particular constituency, the economic parliament will present the document to the person. And the person will also bring out his own manifesto and compare his manifesto with what the economic parliament had. And two of them will liars and draw up a clear manifesto that whoever wants to enter into power will have. After that, time will be set according to the principle of leadership by objective and that of management by objective. There is what we call smart. And smart has to do with that of objective. Where SMART stands for S, specific, M, measurable, A, attainable, R, realistic or relevant, and T, time-based. The economic parliament and whoever wants to become governor or prime minister in Africa will then lay us together. And from the manifesto that the economic parliament will bring out, and that's which person that wants to enter into power will bring out, they will together draw out a clear manifesto break it into time this one will take a year to achieve two years three years four years and we just align bring out all the projects and say look at what you can you are supposed to achieve within four years based on what you, you have said and based on what we have looked at we have seen that look at the amount of resources you're going to have for the four years look at what you can be able to achieve 100 percent if you utilize your resources perfectly and once the system, once the uh, objective has been set, then the economic parliament will also give time limits. According to the principle of SMART, time it has to be time based. You're supposed to achieve at least 20% of all your objectives, which you have four years to achieve. You're supposed to achieve at least 20% in the first one year in office. You're supposed to build at least this amount of food and this amount of project by the end of your first year in office. And we're also going to check the quality of the product of the project you're going to carry out. And because of that, the economic parliament has to be more powerful than the executive because Africa must operate a system that is parliamentary centered and not a system that is executively centered. And once the objective, as you said, after the year, by the end of the year, first year in office, the economic parliament will check and not if the particular governor or prime minister has achieved up to 20% of everything in his four-year manifesto. If he has not achieved up to 20%, there will be a warning given to him that you have to achieve at least 40% in your second year in office. If at the end of the four, four, uh, second year in office, that leader is not able to achieve up to 40% of all he was supposed to achieve then the economic parliament will immediately impeach that leader and that will be the end in fact once the leader is not able to achieve up to 40 percent of the objective he himself that will be the end of his tenure no need for impeachment it will be enshrined on the constitution of africa or in the constitution now at the end of the four years in office the leader is expected to achieve at least 80 percent of whatever is written in the manifesto at least 80 percent that would then give the leader the opportunity to go for a second tenure if the leader is able to achieve up to 80 percent by the end of his fourth tenure he will be able to go for a second tenure in office if by the end of the second tenure in office he is able to also achieve beyond 80 percent to a close to 90 percent or above that leader could be allowed or can be allowed to go for a third term in office because 
the reason why we have time limits is mostly for the sake of achievement. But through this principle, no leader should be allowed to go beyond the four tenures in office or beyond, beyond third tenure in office. So every leader must have specific objectives that is expected to achieve within a specified time frame. Specific tasks, how much will they are supposed to build, it has to, they have to be specific and have to be measurable. We measure based on what you have your manifesto with what you have in the list. Then, attainable tasks that has to be attainable to be given to them. Realistic and relevant tasks and time based. With this system, African leaders will be forced to wake up. Also, the issue of paying salaries where the governors owe salaries, they refuse to pay five months, six months. It should also be enshrined in this constitution of Africa that no governor should owe salary beyond the first of the month of the next month. And that once you owe salary beyond the first of the next month, the economic parliament will call you up immediately and begin the first warning signal. Once it happens again, second warning, third time, impeachment will follow immediately. And the issue of immunity, where you can have immunity to kill, to owe salaries and so on, that will also be waived. There is nothing like immunity, and immunity as we know it is to remove accountability where we have responsibility. The and for you to achieve all that, to have your immunity, your immunity is based on your performance. Because this system of leadership by objective is a performance-based system of leadership, which is different from what we've been having, where anybody can make any promise, have all the resources, and use them to buy houses, buy land, buy everything for yourself. And that is how we can begin to set up a standard in Africa that once we begin, we'll have the best leadership in the world. And the economic parliament also will begin to look into other several ways to have the best leadership we can have. Because the economic parliament will be the system that will make sure that there is development in Africa and that leadership is not just politics, belonging to different parties and so on. Leadership is going to become a very serious affair in Africa. Leadership will no longer be just enter into office, waste everybody's time. If you're a good leader, people suffer. If you're a bad leader, people suffer. But with this system of leadership by objective, whether you're a good leader or bad leader, nobody cares. You must deliver. If you refuse to deliver at the end of your first year or uh, first year in office, we warn you. At the end of your second year in office, you go out. And immediately the leader is impeached. There should be immediate probe into the leadership, the leadership leaders of uh, situation in office. Every single time stolen, the African Economic Parliament or the Economic Parliament and the different tiers of African government should immediately launch investigations and recover every single thing and penalize the leader. With this, whoever is not serious should stay in his house and be watching those who are serious lead Africa from last to first. This is a system of leadership by objective. I will still draw up a more or elaborate plan about this system and I believe that economists across the world, analysts should analyze the system, put up something in a book, let us have something that will present and mandate the African Union to institute across Africa and all African leadership across all Africa and at different uh, tiers must follow this system of leadership by objective which is now the new system for leadership in Africa. Definitely with this, Africa will have the best leadership the world can offer. And Africa will be on her way again, rising from last to first. God bless Africa. You and the South African play your own part to make sure that this system of leadership and objective becomes established and institutionalized in Africa. Because what Africa needs is not just strong men. Africa needs strong institutions. That it takes strong men to build strong institutions. And it takes weak men to build weak institutions. Let us be the strong men strong women to build strong institutions needed to build a gigantic world for Africa. God bless Africa.